My name's Maddie. <laughs> I'm supposed to do that first. Um, I, uh, for 10 years of my life, I, I was the, the front man in a, a metal band. And, uh, and, and I had this weird job to, 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 to travel around the world and, and, and play our music in bars and nightclubs. And um, it was amazing. It, it, was, it was weird and, and awesome, and I'm so grateful for the time that I got to do it. I'm grateful that I'm not doing it anymore. Um, but, but I'm grateful for the, the time that I got to do it. And, and uh, you know, the thing I think that, that kept me passionate about this is, is this. That was not my calling. That was my job. My calling is to make a big deal out of Jesus everywhere I go. And that just happened to be the job that I went to every day. And so I would step on stage in a, in a, in a nightclub right in between an atheist band and a satanic band. <laughs> and I'd preach the gospel. And, and, and what would happen every night is we'd have some people standing there with their middle fingers in the air. People spitting at me and cussing at me saying, shut the F up, this isn't church, right? And then right next to them, you'd have somebody else with tears running on their face. And their hands raised in surrender as the God of all creation reached into their life and changed them forever. And, uh, and it was such a beautiful and such an in incredible, amazing thing. And, and I think if there's one thing I learned from all of that, it's this. The gospel is powerful. <laughs> and, you know, I preached the gospel for a long time, man, because, because I love seeing people's lives changed. I love it. I love seeing people encounter the, the, the power and the love of, of Jesus, the Savior. Um, I, I love seeing people set free from, from shame and from guilt and from depression and from, uh, from, from, uh, from, 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 from deception or, or brokenness. I, I, I love it. But something changed over the last few years that I was in, in, in that position with the band, and, and that is this, that I stopped preaching the gospel because I loved seeing people get impacted by it. And I started preaching the gospel because it just deserves to be preached. Now, let, let me explain this to you. I still love seeing people's lives get changed. But if I come up here and I preach my guts out and everybody just leaves tonight, well, at least I made a big deal about Jesus. That's the call on my life. My call is not to get more people to follow me or to listen to me. My call is not to get people to run up to the front when I get done preaching. My call is not to make people cry when I talk about, uh, 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 when I teach out of the Bible. My call is to make a big deal out of Jesus everywhere I go. And if people laugh at me for it, praise God, I'm still walking in my calling. If people fall on their face and, and, and confess their sins and get delivered and transformed forever, praise God, I'm walking in my calling. If people throw rocks at me until I die, if I, get, if I get captured by, uh, by, by, by insurgents somewhere and get my head cut off on YouTube, well, praise God, man, I'm walking in my calling. Like, we need to separate. A friend of mine recently said, he said that our parents' generation struggled with the prosperity gospel. Um, but our generation struggles with the popularity gospel. Yeah. That, that our parents' generation bought into this idea that if your ministry is doing well financially... God must be in it. And so we had people move God out of the way just a little bit to make sure they could continue doing well financially. Because it, God would never mess up our bottom line. And so I don't have to, if it's good for our bank account, I don't even have to ask God, I'm just going to do it. Because that's what God wants, is for us to be rich. It's, it's wrong, it's deceptive. Now our generation struggles with the thing that we call, the, the, we could call the popularity gospel. Now, we're not chasing after money. We're chasing after followers. We're chasing after attention. We're chasing after YouTube views and Facebook likes and attention. And people are, 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 are shaping their ministries. They're building their ministries based on this principle that God wants me to get more people's attention. And so if God is going to do something that will offend people or make people feel uncomfortable or alienate people or, or, or challenge people, well, that's probably not God because then those people are going to stop paying attention to us. And so, God, why don't you get out of the way and I'll build a bigger platform and then you'll be happy with me because what you want, God, is for me to be popular. Ugh, stop. Let's just, can we, 
that, that, the Bible calls that a doctrine of devils. It, it is wrong. It is from hell. We have to be better than that if we're ever going to make it. Jesus preached for three years. He, he would walk into cities and every sick person would get healed and every possessed person would get delivered. And then, at the end of it all, imagine this pastor, right? He starts a ministry, he travels around, entire cities full of people get, get touched by the power of God. Uh, multitudes of people are following him and then he gets arrested for blasphemy. Then he gets put on trial and everybody disappears. Where was Lazarus when he was on trial? Nobody stood up and testified for him. They were gone, everybody. Even, even Peter, who cut a guy's ear off and said, I'll never leave you. Even Peter disappeared. And people said, hey, weren't you that guy that was with him? And he said, no, I don't know him. And, uh, and so for three years, Jesus does ministry, and he touches all of these people. And then at the end of his ministry, it looks like this. He gets arrested, he gets put on trial, uh, and then he gets convicted in a court of law, condemned to die, and his mom and John are the only people standing even sort of close to him. In fact, some scholars believe that there were less than 15 people even present when he was dying on the cross. <laughs> Would you think about that? That is the single most significant moment in human history, and there were less than 15 people even there. We've got to get out of this idea that we have to do more or be more popular, that we have to create a bigger spectacle of ourselves to please God. What we have to do to please God is walk with God. We've got to seek His face. We've got to hear His voice. We've got to love His presence. And if we can't do that, it doesn't matter how many people we reach. We're going to have nothing to give them if we get their attention. 